Uh, this is John Sarver, and uh, welcome to the uh, sixth installment of the Michigan Solar uh, Story Series that's sponsored by Great Lakes Renewable Energy Association and the Michigan Solar Users Network. And tonight, uh, uh, it's kind of a treat because uh, Sean's going to tell us about his do-it-yourself project in Grand Rapids. Uh, please mute yourself until until the presentation is over and you need to ask some questions. So with that, uh, Sean, uh, why don't you tell us your story? Yeah, so uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, just feel free to give a thumbs up or not, but uh, perfect. Yeah, so uh, so my, my interest in solar has been twofold. One, uh, we've always had the environmental interest. So my, my wife is a college professor and, uh, and does some on sustainability every once in a while. And the second was the finances always made sense to me. So uh, years ago, I looked at solar and uh, as solar prices were dropping, I noticed that, uh, you know, it continued to become more affordable. And honestly, I wish I would have known what a tariff rate was several years ago because I could have made out like a bandit, uh, as I know some folks have. Um, so I, I continued to, uh, you know, look at the different options. And so uh, what, what drew me to solar was, was, the, was the money and then also the environmental friendliness of it, too. Um, so, so coming from that angle, and I've, I've you know, certainly continued to advocate for solar, uh, and uh, it was really a finance blog, a finance post uh, from a, a guy, his literal name is Mr. Money Mustache, that's his blog name, and so the folks in the finance, they know that name, but uh, for, for some other folks, like, you never heard of the guy, but he, um, he, he's really great at uh, just basically empowering folks and saying, yeah, you don't need to own that big fancy car, you can, you go do this other thing, and uh, solar was one of the posts that he did that really drew me in and he walked through it and did his whole system in Colorado that's about the size of mine uh, right before the tariffs hit um, you know the overseas tariffs and was able to do the whole project for under four thousand uh, dollars so his his payback was incredible mine was not that by any means uh, but I'll go through I just basically wanted to show you guys what it consisted of for my my DIY uh, I'm an accountant. I've never been on a roof before I ever did this project. Uh, and the two things that were key for me was getting the money right um, uh, and then just being safe as I did it. So I'll walk you guys through, show you what, it, what it's got. Does that work, John? Okay. I'm going to try to make this easy, but this is our setup, as you can see. So 12 panels is what I'm running right now. It's, uh, gosh, a 3.5 kilowatt system because each of these uh, is just under uh, 300 watts. So these are a couple years old. Um, on there, uh, if you notice, this is a... Uh, so some of you may wonder, you know, hey, is there enough room on there? I've heard that I need three feet. Yes, you do on an attached house, but this is a detached structure. So I was able to get by uh, with that specifically. I was able to go all the way out to the roof line. Uh, I'll take you back where the inverter is too. So just a sec. So just running a uh, Solar Edge HD Wave that's connected here. Uh, I actually don't have this connected to Wi-Fi. I could. I, I thought about putting an Ethernet connection, but in all honesty, I just it didn't make that much of a difference to me to uh, to know. And Fred, if you don't mind, just going on mute there, just getting a little feedback. Um, but basically, the I had my electrician do all the stuff that is associated with the inverter. So if you notice here, let me try to get this just right. So he had installed a panel a few years back when we moved into the house. Uh, we were still running fuses uh, when I moved into the house five years ago, and those fuses were about uh, 60 years old, maybe. So they were they were quite old, uh, that whole setup. So he upgraded us. Uh, I was able to get this wrapped into the tax credit as well. So as I mentioned, I'm a CPA. Uh, so that, that worked for me to, to go through and, and have the right justification for that, uh, even though that project was earlier. Uh, he went ahead and did the uh, the shut off. Um, so if you notice that that box right below the white inverter, so the white box is the inverter shut off is the box right below it, and those just basically go straight into a back fed um, uh, circuit breaker in in our main box. And so I didn't have to touch any of that, and he did all that for five hundred dollars, including all of this nice conduit. So I I feel like that was five hundred dollars minus one hundred and fifty for the. The TAC credit, uh, you know, well spent, not having to do any of that work. Um, so what we did, and I will show you more of this. You're probably getting a the glare there. Uh, yeah, I'll show you the attachments uh, here in a minute. So let me get back to my spot. I have all my equipment pulled out. 
So as you can see, I've got a panel behind me. This is an extra one that's gonna go up in the roof here this summer. Uh, I'm a little mad at the IRS because they changed the, uh, the tax credit a little bit where it makes it a little hard to get structure. Uh, so getting a new roof and your, uh, your solar under a tax credit is gonna be a little tougher this year than it has been before. Um, but this is basically the whole setup. So this is, I'm taking out my place here. This is what's called iron, this is iron ridge racking. This stuff is made out of the aluminum. It's really easy to cut. Uh, this just here is just a one foot piece that I pulled out, but they come in anywhere from 10 to 14 to 20 foot, I think. And then basically everything easily attaches to this. So on this back side, there's a, there's a groove here that gets attached to what's called a flash foot. And I'll show you a picture of that because uh, I don't have one on me right now. Uh, I have my wire clips that just clips in there really easily. And then ultimately, uh, there's this thing. It's called a UFO. So Iron Ridge has this great product it's called a UFO. I'm not selling anything. I'm just saying it's great because it is. <laughs> and then that just basically fits in there. And then uh, you, uh, let me see, you bolt it down with a torque wrench. And that's how your solars are, your solars attached to the racking. So really simple to do if you can be up there on the roof and basically do your acrobatics, uh, if you can be there safely. Uh, that's, that's all it really took there. What I've got on here too is an end cap. So this is a piece that you know isn't needed if it's holding on to two panels because you might have one panel on each side of this piece. Uh, but uh, effectively that's, that's where it attaches. And each panel has four attachment points uh, to the racking. Uh, also what's included on there, uh, this, uh, some of y'all are Enphase fanatics. This is not Enphase, so this is Solar Edge as well. This is called a DC optimizer. It basically takes this big dumb instrument, a uh, big blunt instrument, and makes it a little bit smarter. Uh, so it's able to shut it off. It does a few other key things just to um, uh, make sure to regulate voltage, et cetera. It makes it a little bit more safe because uh, it'll actually regulate. And as you're installing the panels, if they're hooked into that, it makes it a little bit safer because if it's not communicating with what's called your, your inverter that I showed you before, it's, it's, it's you know, not producing electricity, or at least it's stopping it at the box, at least from what I've heard. Now, don't take my word for the safety parts of it. You know, this is a lot of DIY research. Uh, this is just called a splice. This basically is another aluminum piece uh, that you screw into the uh, to the uh, to the uh, the racking here. It just basically fits right in there. That makes sure when you have multiple spans of aluminum railing that you're able to hook them in together uh, because that whole thing needs to be grounded. Uh, so basically, you can ground it all together uh, by grounding the system together. And then uh, my electrician took part, uh, you know, took care of the last bit of that. Um, but you've got to make sure the whole system's all tied in together because I, I, you saw I had two rows of six. Uh, those are, aren't actually naturally connected. There's no connection point between row one and row two, except for a piece of, I think it's six gauge copper wire that I went and picked up at the hardware store for 10 bucks. And then there's two things called grounding lugs uh, that basically screw into this, uh, to this railing that we've showed as well. And then you may wonder, you know, how do these tie in? Do I have to do any, you know, complex electrical work? Uh, you know, I did pull in, uh, you've got a male and female plug. These things work super easy to plug in. Uh, I don't have my, it's called an MC4 connection. I do not have my MC4 tool, which is a $2 or $10 tool that you get with this that allows you to unplug it, but basically just goes in like that and, and you're good to go. Uh, you can wire in series or parallel. I asked all those questions up front. I can't actually remember what mine is right now. So apologies for that, but I'm just trying to show you that, you know, a, a yokel can, can do this project. Um, you can see behind me, you can see my extra conduit because we are going to actually go straight up, uh, straight up the roof line. And once we get our roof done, we're going to add another 12 panels, which will power my electric car. Uh, we bought a Ford C-Max for, you know, a few grand uh, that nobody else wanted. And, uh, and yeah, we, we live in the city, so we pretty much drive around with that thing. Uh, you know, anytime, anytime we want, we can get out on uh, either solar power or, you know, probably some good old coal. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but I, you know, I've got my uh, presentation up. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and show you guys a couple of the other resources. Any questions right now before I dive into the, the, the presentation part of it and the money? Yeah, I had sure. one shot. Sure. Sorry. Uh, the, the question was, it's around how you're doing the inversion. So if I, if I follow your path correctly, you're not, you don't have an inverter at every, uh, every panel. You're bringing it all down and centralizing that inversion from, from DC to AC? That correct, that correct. Yeah, correct. So that big white box that we showed you, uh, that's a solar edge HD wave inverter. It's about a $1,500 part. 
And that can handle, you know, it'll probably be able to handle about 24 panels. Uh, so I've got 12 right now. Uh, it's got a peak capacity. I'll definitely get to what's called clipping is it, it cuts off, you know, if there's too much power in like an right. April or a May day uh, when it's really sunny and chilly, uh, that's a, that's a good day for solar. Um, you know, that, uh, that, that inverter is doing the ACDC conversion. What you might be thinking about is there's a box very similar to this called right. end phase, like an IQ seven, IQ eight, I forget what number they're on. Uh, but they actually uh, allow you to do that. And then there's basically a controller box. I forget what the name exactly is called that, that just brings everything together at the very end. So uh, just a different type of system. I would say if I did it all over again, I'd do end phase all the way. Um, it's just uh, good money and it's, it's expandable. And I'm, I'm the type that, you know, I'm never, you know, I'm never quite satisfied with what I did. So I always try to, you know, tweak it a little bit. Okay. Good Fair question. Enough. Thank you. I have a, just a couple quick, two quick questions. Sure. One is, be, first question is, and I'll just add both together. First question, because you did DYI, is there any words of wisdom going with this, the uh, city engineer, as opposed to getting an outside contractor that, you know, like you can pass along? And secondly, sure. is the fact, I know what the efficiency of your panels are, given the fact I have a, that I have a sister in Granville, I know how much, you know, the lake effect stuff and that the, the west side of the state's a lot more cloudy than the east side of the state in Michigan is not, you know, like Arizona anyhow. So could you comment yeah. on both of those? Yeah, no, Charles, those are good questions. So I, I believe the first one you mentioned was permitting. So yeah, I didn't, I don't actually have that in the presentation and every city's different. Um, so uh, Grand Rapids, uh, you, I typically think is progressive, but you know, when it comes to solar, there was 20 people a year uh, doing solar. And I think 10 or so of the permits were, were power home. Uh, you know, that was doing those. So they were just, you know, they advertise more than anybody else does uh, around here. Uh, and so uh, the folks that were doing, uh, you know, solar, uh, you know, they, they, had, they had some experience. They didn't have a solar PV permit. They have a building permit, an electrical permit that they asked you to get. Uh, I found the city permitting office to be really helpful and they've been really helpful over a multitude of projects. So I was familiar working with them. I will be honest, Jeremy Zinn, who's in the uh, Michigan Solar User Networks, is fantastic. If you don't want to go DIY and you want DIY and you want a phenomenal sun power system, he's the guy to go with. Uh, he actually pulled all my permitting initially because I was going to go sun power, and then you know ultimately I got cold feet. So if Jeremy, any of you are friends of him, I apologize to him profusely. Uh, ended up paying him well for the permit work uh, that he ended up doing, and then uh, my permits were already pulled. But since then, I've come through and done that with a friend. Uh, actually, two friends who have done their solar systems uh, in Grand Rapids uh, within the city permitting office. I went back to the same guys, and they even asked me, they're like, hey, you said you were going to put your uh, your Ford on uh, on your solar power. Did that ever happen? And, you know, he, he remembered me from a few years back. But really, the gist of it, we pulled several things together. We had an electrical line diagram that basically you could just copy and redo online. Uh, that wasn't difficult at all. Um, you know, you could draw it out on paper. We actually did for one document, and he took it. We had a site plan document that we drew out on paper, uh, so that was actually pretty, pretty, pretty slick to be able to do. Uh, and then we had, I believe, a hundred or a couple hundred dollars worth of permitting fees that we had for both. Um, the electrical, sorry, the electrical permit actually, my um, our electrician, which we use Wireworks Electric here in Grand Rapids, uh, and they weren't expert experts in solar, but Keith has done a nice job for for me for other work, uh, and he's edu he's educated enough on solar that he was able to do a nice job on it and, and do it right. Um, uh, cause I know there's even confusion and frustration among the solar community that not all electricians get it. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, uh, you know, at least this, my guy was, uh, was a good trade off for that. Um, and so, yeah, the permitting process, you know, does take some work. I'm happy to walk anybody through at least my experience in further detail. If you end up going this path, I'm, I'm active in the solar users group. So you can always just message my name. It's Sean B or Sean B A, uh, is what shows up. Charles, you also mentioned the uh, the uh, the uh, the snow, right? So our lake effect snow. So so I will say in the winter, I wish I had panels that were at a sixty degree angle, and that snow would just slide well, right off. Well, I just I also meant the yep. fact they got more, much more cloud cover, and I don't know cloud cover. I, because when I put solar back two thousand one, if you had a little bit of cloud over it, those days, it didn't work. And I know there's some they can work in some degree in cloudy days, and I'm thinking because of the Grand Rapids, there are a lot of Sure. Called the lakes, but not just the snow, but just over you know, cover. You know, panels like pay back return on investment. Yeah, so you all probably see my Cleveland Indians hat on here. I grew up in Ohio, so that state down south. 
And uh, I actually find that even West Michigan is more sunny than I grew up in Ohio. Um, I, I have not noticed any departure from what PV Watts told me, and PV Watts does include uh, weather data. Uh, so I just put in 49506, and my output's been within 5%, maybe even within like 2% of what PV Watts, and I'll share about that resource here in a minute. Uh, that's an online free resource that uh, I'm happy to walk anybody through how to use, uh, you know, outside of this conversation. Charles, that help? Good. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to share a presentation here. Um, we'll still have more time for questions, and I, I promise it won't be too boring. Unless you don't like numbers, then I'm sorry. All right. So can everybody see okay? Thumbs up? Good. Okay. All right, so uh, the resources that I put on this schedule are really just all the, all the resources that I use. Uh, as I mentioned, there was that Mr. Money Mustache, that funny named blog guy that our finance folks uh, you know, have read that are on the call here today. Uh, he has just a quick post that walks through everything. He actually did a couple things wrong and people corrected him in the comments and he corrected them in the comments uh, and went back and fixed it. So there's, there's a lot of, you know, it's just a really good starting point. Uh, it's a quick read, uh, it's pretty empowering. Uh, and frankly, the rest of his stuff is just really good. And he's not trying to sell you something. He's trying to make you have a better life. Um, so I appreciate that. Uh, I've utilized two of these vendors that are listed on the very bottom, Alt E Store and Wholesale Solar. I really appreciate the folks at Wholesale Solar. They've got just really great support network. They are more expensive, but they do give free shipping if you if you press them. Um, so I felt that they were very they were very supportive. They shipped all the stuff from California. Uh, at least on my first setup. So that's when I got sun, pay, sun, sun, um, sorry, solar world panels and solar world is now defunct. So uh, I'm not going to be trying to get my warranty, uh, you know, very, very likely anytime soon. So hopefully those panels last a while. A while. Alt eStore is another organization I've got quite a bit of experience with. So I, there was a short period of time I thought, you know, could I go into this business? Would I have interest? And you know what? I'm, I'm going to stick to what I'm good at. Um, and uh, there's a lot of people in the, in the community that do solar well. Uh, Alt E Store is an organization that I took some beginner solar classes with. Uh, I bought my second set of panels from them, and they uh, they just you know they do it right. They have good free educational videos when you're thinking about you know what type of setup you might do. I, I think they're the folks to go to when you want to talk battery backup. Uh, if you've got like an off grid cap cabin, I've been very impressed with uh, with the Alt E Store. And then I put Renvu on there. They're a newcomer. Uh, they have very uh, affordable products. Uh, if you're the type that you know, you're willing to take a, a, a pallet that might have had some mold on it. They'll, they'll send these like great deals uh, every once in a while from, from panels that come from China and different places. Um, I also put on here, there's a multitude of resources that I think are really crucial. PV Watts is, is just amazing. It's a free resource through the National uh, Renewable Energy uh, Laboratories. Uh, it's really intuitive to work through and it tailors the solar exactly to your setup and it takes about five minutes to figure out. And then you can play around with it infinitely. Like what happens if I tilt my panels a little bit more? What happens if I get more panels? They do a really nice job of that. Google Sunroof is a really good, just like quick hitter intro to solar. If you're trying to go DIY, you just type in your address and it tells you how good your roof might be for solar. It's not super accurate, but it's, it, it at least gets you a start. I put a ladder, you definitely need a ladder. Uh, scaffolding, uh, construction scaffolding is even better. Uh, if you've got a friend who's a construction worker or, if you've got uh, a Home Depot that you can go and rent scaffolding, they certainly got it and they tell you how to do it right to get it set up safely. Uh, I said local help is always good too, if you know somebody else that's done it before or somebody in the network. Uh, and then lastly, there's this great tool called Aurora Solar. When I was thinking about going into the business, I realized this, this is really only a $249 a month solar tool. It's really intuitive to learn and it's actually probably the most optimal. So if you want to geek out on solar and you've got an extra 250 bucks or you just want to do their one week free trial, um, uh, that is an option for folks. Uh, and they have some phenomenal tools. Uh, Grand Rapids is not quite on this, but I know Lansing and Detroit is. Uh, they use LIDAR, which is basically a sonar down from a plane to be able to figure out what, uh, what the, um, the shading might be. Uh, because you can look at multitude of different things. You can, you know, I can look at my solar pathways when I give in my address. I can tell you what, what direction, but PV Watts can't tell me if there's a tree in my backyard. Uh, Aurora actually can tell you if there's a tree in your backyard, tell you how high it is, 
and tell you where to move or you know if you were to cut back the tree a little bit you know where you might want to where you might want to do that and how much you might want to cut it back um uh, i just i'm really impressed with that software and it continues to get better it's a silicon valley startup they do a really nice job and they really supply all the industry too uh so again it's 249 dollars. So it's not for everybody uh you can definitely put that in under the tax credit as well uh, at least per my understanding um so that you do get some of that money back Energy Sage is great, and then I'd say the Michigan Solar Users Network. There's just so many great guys on there. Uh, if you get if you get lost and you're like, I'm not going to go do DIY, I'm going to go with uh, you know the the uh, installers. There's several good ones, and folks will give you recommendations for other good ones. Um, cost to DIY, I did put this down, and I will say Craig T and the Michigan Solar Users, Users Network uh, schooled me hardcore on this because uh, he actually did it so much cheaper than this example even is, uh, and he even did it with less work than this example is. So props to him. Uh, if you want to see, he and I had a quick exchange just prior to this asking about what the wattage cost was uh, for installed in DIY solar. And so what I came up with here was just an example. You know, a, a typical Michigan house is anywhere from 3,000 to about 20,000 kilowatt hours. Uh, you hear my AC unit working. You know, that's, that's electricity going out the door right now. Uh, it's definitely coal powered right now because my solar is not going on. Um, but, uh, but I do appreciate that, uh, that they... Um, that, uh, that there is a multitude of different type of houses. So I've consulted with friends that wanna go DIY. Uh, when I had Aurora, I did probably 15 or 20 different individuals through our finance group said, what would it take for you to DIY solar and, and gave them just an outlay. And I, I'm not gonna offer that to y'all, but, but you definitely can do you know, something similar. Uh, 3000 kilowatt hours doesn't take many panels, but I, I did put a kind of a, an average in my house is about uh, 6,000 kilowatt hours a year without the electric vehicle. It's about maybe eight or 9,000 after. Uh, we just got the car, so I don't know how much it's going to end up with this year. Uh, but I put down, you know, what's the cost going to be? And these are all pre-tax, pre-ITC costs. Uh, for those of you that know Michigan, we don't have many tax incentives. We do have uh, property tax um, exemption, which is sort of usable, um, you know, that some of us have seen. Uh, but I put down just really rough costs for Alt E Store this week. Um, so you can get some pretty decent panels. Uh, I put down Pimar, which is an Italian panel manufacturer. It's actually the one that's sitting behind me here. Uh, they are uh, about 220 for just over 300. Uh, Hanwha actually I believe is about the same and actually I got that number wrong, apologies. These are Hanwha uh, Q cells, uh, 60 cell, uh, so 345 watts. So I believe it's a Chinese panel, but they're really cool. They, they have half cells and so if half the panel shaded, the rest of the panel doesn't actually get you know, uh, ruined by it, uh, by that shading. So Hanwha has just got a really innovative product in the solar world. Um, but it is, it's a Chinese manufactured panel. So I know many of us want to go American when we can as well. Inverter, uh, Solar Edge, it's a German product. They just have the top of the line. You don't have to go that. You can go Frontius or, uh, or Sunny Boy or some other options as well in the electrical product space. I put optimizers down, uh, 70, 70 bucks a piece, and that goes per panel. You need one of those per panel. Uh, end phase comparatively, uh, that would be like 150 bucks ish per. Uh, you can always go with an older end phase model to save on costs because uh, there is quite a bit, like a 30% jump if you're going for a more expensive version. And then you don't have to buy the uh, the big expensive inverter. You can buy a $500 uh, box at the uh, uh, that connects it all together at the end. Racking these uh, these aluminum racks, uh, this stuff, uh, you know, all this uh, all these little connector pieces. Uh, that's uh, 300 bucks, 500 bucks, uh, you know, for each of those all together. Um, so there is a decent cost to that. You got to get stickers. I think I spent like 60 bucks in stickers uh, to make sure I had the right electrical stickers so that, you know, when a firefighter comes over to shut off the box, when my, when my garage is on fire, you know, that they're not going to shock themselves uh, or, or do anything dangerous. Um, and my, my electrician put those on as well, too. So felt comfortable about that. Uh, various electrical components, you know, there was additional things I had to add, the, the copper. I was really high on some of these estimates, too, just to, just to really put it down. Um, and then uh, shipping, right? You're going to have to freight ship from Massachusetts or California, most likely. Or if you've got a friend in the Michigan Solar Users Network, you can go and have it shipped to their house and then go pick up the pallet from there. Um, I also put down your time. Man, this took a lot of time, so I will say that. But I, I did put down what it would take for me to do it again. Uh, I put down the tools that I didn't have, like I didn't have the right ladder, so I went and bought a $100 ladder, I went and bought some scaffolding, uh, and then I actually just sold those for more than they they were worth, because um, I was able to include those in last year's tax credit, uh, so there was some positive there. Uh, interconnection, you got to pay consumers energy to hook up to the grid. When you're a PowerPoint with them, you got to put it on. 
uh, permitting also, uh, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks depending on the city. I put the electrical costs and some cities may ask you for a building permit to put a structural engineer. Uh, Jeremy actually uh, did that for me through, uh, through a, a company. So you can always ask around for structural engineers. They were just making sure that the, uh, their, my hundred year old house was gonna be able to withstand uh, that, that uh, you know, product. Uh, you know, being on there because it's a, it's a lot of weight. A panel's 40 pounds. The uh, the racking, you know, it doesn't weigh a ton. Maybe 10 pounds for a 14 foot span. The attachments don't weigh much. But when you add it all up, it is it is quite a bit. And then thinking about the snow load, you know, our roofs are typically built for snow. Uh, the snow load's pretty high. But the lucky part is, you know, snow typically slides off those panels quicker than it would a typical roof that's well insulated. Um, I put the the cost after tax before tax credit ended up to 8,700 under this five five kilowatt example. After tax credit, $6,400, and that includes all the install and everything. I put that you get about $900 in Grand Rapids a year, so you can't offset every single dime that you pay to Consumers Energy, but you can offset about just over 14 cents a kilowatt hour under net metering. And for those of you wondering, uh, net metering will be going away soon. Uh, consumers Energy is, is able to, as early as I think August, and I don't know the full details on this, change the rate uh, to what's called an avoided cost rate. And DTEs, from what I hear, is terrible. Um, so uh, the, the reimbursement that, uh, that folks are gonna get uh, will be less if you wait a year or two uh, on, on DIY solar um, or even installers. Uh, we get grandfathered in, so many of us are grandfathered into tariff rates, uh, which is higher rate than net metering, and then net metering for 10 years. So I think I've got eight and a half years left on, or eight years left on net metering. I put the ROI, this isn't their best ROI calculation, 14%, and I, I also call that after tax. I can't get that in the stock market. So that's a, uh, that's a, that's a good return. Um, and then I also put, uh, you know, does it add value to your house? I think it does. When I think about, you know, from this from the finance side, if I can if I can avoid a thousand dollars a year in this house, you know, that's a that's a pretty big draw for the homeowner. And if the homeowner doesn't want to pay extra for that, the next person that's gonna buy, I can tear these panels down in about a, a day and a half because I put them up there. Uh, so I feel pretty comfortable that I could take the system with me if I needed to. Uh, yeah, you know, they could, you know, break little micro fractures, that's an issue. So you always gotta be careful with handling them. But I feel very confident that if I put it up there, I can get it back down. So that's that's one option we looked at. Um, you know, if the if the next, you know, if it just doesn't feel like they they want it or they want a discount, I put the time on here. You guys can all see this. Uh, basically, the gist here is it took time. It took a lot of time. It took several weeks. When I've helped friends, even with the help, they still are taking a lot of time to go through the process. But when I calculated out my salary per hour, it was good. So I felt pretty good that you know I was making ninety dollars an hour, which is better than I make in a salary job. Uh, so ninety bucks an hour without having to pay taxes on it is a is a good incentive for me. Uh, tools, not it's not challenging. Torque wrenches, fiberglass ladder if you got one, you can borrow one from a friend. Roof safety equipment I think is key. Even on this detached roof, I put it on. They'll always be safe. Hot gun, uh, you want to ask your roofers about you know hey I'm going to have penetrations in this roof. How do I do it right? Um, and we can talk about that. I know I didn't show you the flashing, but there's, there's, a, there's a piece and you can't really see it because I'm not in the right orientation, but it's about the size of a piece of paper. So an A4 piece of paper that is an aluminum flashing that doesn't allow anybody or any, any water to get in. And there's silicon, 40 year silicon that's basically in there or cock, like roofing cock that's appropriate. And you can talk to Lowe's, they'll give you the right, um, the right option or you can ask around online to get the right option from that. And then you always need a friend. Uh, I could do just about everything except put the panels on without a friend. Um, but just having a friend is, is a lot easier. And then you get to have a beer afterwards and, and look what you did. Hey, Sean, uh, you've got about yeah, five was, minutes left. Now they might yeah. uh, extend us. Sometimes they do that, but they might not. So just as a warning, about five minutes, maybe. Yep, I'm going to stop. So I'm just going to leave it open to questions now. Okay. Sean, I put something in the chat window. Would you mind emailing your slides afterwards? Uh, I put my email address in the chat, and if anyone else wants those as well, please uh, sure. send your email in the chat window. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. That'll make it easy. Uh, Sean, it's Fred from uh, the Detroit area. <clears throat> Real quick, I noticed on your racking, um, you have uh, a string inverter down below, so you're running DC off the roof to your string inverter. I have microinverters under each panel, so I've got a little bit more electronics up on the roof. Not having any history with uh, how, how reliable those things are. When I put my panels up, I left a little gap in between them so that I could get to any one that may have failed without tearing you up. 
do you know if that's a problem for the cables that I've got up there now that uh, the, their cables are kind of exposed to the sun more than they would be in a, a system like yours where you're all uh, one up yeah. against the other? Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not the expert here, but I'm aware that um, you know I don't believe the uh, the the black cables are rated for. You know, they're probably not going to last for 20 years with the conduit. You know, exposed to the elements, but they're they're definitely designed to last 25 years plus. Uh, you know, under the panel. Um, but but I like that for a few reasons. The further you are off the roof, the more airflow you get, the cooler the panels run. Uh, right. The further you are off the roof, the less likely a squirrel is going to go up there and chew it. That's actually a, a legit worry that I have. Uh, so one of these days I'll get up there and put a squirrel guard, but luckily I haven't had any issues. You know, the day will happen where I actually do have an issue. Uh, but I would strongly say like some hardware cloth would, would keep the squirrels out because uh, they're known to chew some wires. So I'd almost be more worried about them. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you can get up there easy, but, you know, conduit might be nice. Uh, you know, if you could put it on there, that might, that might prolong the life, but I am not an expert. Uh, so I would ask that, that, that in the group. Um, I bet some of our, our NABSEB certified folks, which is the solar certification, would be able to answer that. All right, fair enough, thank you. Mm -hmm. We have three, three more minutes for questions, so keep them coming. I'll ask one more if I have the floor. Uh, Sean, back to the, the pulling DC without a microinverter all the way down to the controller. How thick of a wire do you have to pull between the panels and the inverter? Because from what I know with, with DC in, in like an RV, for example, you've got to have some pretty fat cables to pull over distance. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll compare this. So um, there, there is a limit to the number of panels you can put on and, and it depends on the panel itself. Right. Uh, but you know, here's my, here's my finger. This is, this is not as thick as my finger. Um, you know, I do believe it's still pretty high gauge, but yeah, that's rated for 25 years. And I believe I can actually go on a span a string of 16. Um, I, I, uh, I'm not sure if the, uh, the DC optimizers may have some you know, positive help there as well because they do some of the regulation altogether. But yeah, the uh, the amount that is coming through, I think it's like 360 volts, um, and then uh, you know a pretty decent current depending on the time. Because I'm getting you know up to probably on this 3.4 on a on a good day, like good April day, 4,000 watts um, that are going through, and that that inverter is able to you know carry more. The positive I also say too is like any piece that anybody could get close to is covered in conduit as well. Um, but I know that's not insulation. It's just, you know, another, another check. But uh, yeah, I haven't heard any concerns about those as long as you're following within spec. Perfect. Thank you. Well, Sean, thank you very much. And uh, this has been very, uh, very uh, helpful, I think, to a whole bunch of people. Even if people aren't going to do their own system, it's helpful just to get some of the uh, nitty gritty aspects of how the whole thing gets put together, I think, for anybody who's uh, considering purchasing a system. So, uh, uh, next week, Roger Eberhardt's coming back to talk about his system that is actually <laughs> powering his home. Uh, he's, he's provided two presentations, one about his uh, system that is used for his electric vehicle charger and one for his uh, yard tools. Uh, I'm con I've continued to uh, schedule these through June, and I have some other folks who probably will be into July. So I expect this series to continue. I really appreciate, uh, Sean, you making the presentation. And, uh, you know, if you uh, know people who might be interested in attending or even making a presentation, uh, uh, have them send me a note, johnsarver3 at Gmail. And with that, I see we've got about one minute left, so probably somebody might be able to get in a question. <laughs> John, if you send the recording too, I'll, I'll post it and get some amplification too afterwards, or even just like the, well, maybe not the MP3, but the video. I know it's, it's a big file, but usually we can get those online. Yeah, I'll send you the recording. Yep. Great. Yep. Super. Hey, again, thanks everybody for participating. I hope to see you next week. Take care. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, John.